I'm here to talk about what she posted. After everything I've done for her to call me a fake fucking friend, I feel like I don't deserve this. I loved her, not just as a friend. Now, I was that shoulder for her to cry on. I was there to listen to her when no one else would. You know, and I feel like I can't even love anyone as much as how I loved her. It's like all of this this whole time was just a daydream. And, you know, my daydreams may be fake, but she is too. I guess I'm supposed to go this way. I wish I was better with directions. It's a nice night. The air is cool and I can see the stars clearly. I thought there'd be more smog this close at the center of the city. The street is busy, filled with people who all seem like they have somewhere to be. I'm so out of place. The neon of the bar sign shines so bright, it's almost cheerful. Colors, noise. Exactly the excitement I pictured when I thought of a night out downtown. But I don't feel happy. Maybe if I just sit down, figure out where I'm going from here. to ask for directions. I feel like they'll know I don't belong. Just sitting here makes the air feel colder. A man walks out of a bar He's looking at me. Crap. He has dark hair, a collared t-shirt with dark jeans, and he's walking in a straight line directly towards me. anyone is paying attention to us. <sighs> Shit. Go on your phone. Pretend like you don't notice him. He has neatly combed hair. One of the few people on the street that isn't drunk. Fuck. Maybe you should call someone. He's standing right next to me. Don't look up. Excuse me. You look a little young to be out here this late at night by yourself.
Yeah, I just got off work. Um, my ride should be here soon. Did he believe that? Oh, good. You know, I have a daughter your age, and I wouldn't want her to be out this late at night by herself. walks across the street and gets in his little Toyota. As he drives away, he kind of reminds me of my dad. It's gonna be fine, right? It's gonna be fine. Take a deep breath, relax. <sighs> okay, you feel better? Yeah, I do. Um, I'm still nervous though. I know, it's okay. You just have to be normal, okay? Don't like think about how pretty she is and get all fixated and weird, you know? Okay, I mean, I wasn't planning on getting fixated, but, you know, she is, she's really pretty. I'm not going to not think about it. I know you can think about it. Just don't let it come off like you're obsessed with her or anything. I'm not obsessed, not obsessed with her. Why would that, why would it come off like I'm obsessed with her? I'm not saying that you're coming off obsessed with her. I'm just telling you, just play it cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I can do that. I can do that. And maybe, like, don't bring up her ex or anything. Why would I bring up her ex? I wasn't going to. Should I? Should I bring up her ex? No, I'm I'm telling you not to bring up her ex. No, I know, but now you saying that made me think, like, maybe I should. Because, like, he was kind of an asshole. Like, maybe I should mention it and, like, tell her that I, I think that she is better than him. I don't know that that's necessarily a good idea. Well, I don't either, okay? I just... God, I'm... I'm nervous. I want this to go well. I know. Just remember that you're trying to have fun, so try and enjoy yourself. Okay. I will. I will. You're right. <sighs> okay. It's gonna be fun. I'm trying to enjoy myself. Yeah. Just be cool and casual. Should I kiss her? When should I kiss her? Well, just don't plan it out. You can just do it when it feels right. You know that I'm absolutely shit at feeling that stuff out. You know that. I know, but just look, just, just do your best. Okay. When it feels right, go for it. And if it doesn't work out, that doesn't work out. I know, but I really want it to work out. Okay. I just, she's, she's just great. And I don't, I want it to work out. I know. So don't try and pre-plan everything. Just Go with the flow and do what feels right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's gonna be good. Yeah, I'm gonna have fun. We're sitting here stuck in traffic. He has just come out of court. He just picked me up from school. Is he gonna tell me what happened now? When we get home? at all should I just ask so how'd it go he stares for a second she gets 10 hours a week oh I replied a bit broken hearted it is that what she asked for no so she had asked for more kind of he replied try not to hurt me more than I was she asks for every other weekend. Wait, why? I don't want that. I know, that's what I told her. Did she fight it? No, she asked for five hours a week. Wow. 
I'm sorry. I suggested she get 10 after that. Oh. So 10 hours, huh? What do you do 10 hours a week? Drive to school? To practice? I guess we'll have to make it work. My head? My head is fine. Uh, my, uh, I, I was born on October 4th, 2002. Um, what? My name? Uh, my name is Darian. Darian German. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. Um, so, I let you talk, so can I, can I tell you something? Okay, okay, thank you. I know you don't really want to hear it, but uh, I'm going to tell you anyways. So, you probably won't believe me, but yesterday, I'm pretty sure I met my soulmate. Well, let me explain. Uh, for our trip to Israel, we went to this natural pool, and, uh, well, I fell, I fell in. I was leaving, and I remembered I needed to get my glasses, so I went back, and I was, as I went to grab them, I, I slipped. And I fell into this, the, to the pool. And as I thought, this is it. I'm, I'm done. Well, cause, it, what? Sorry, what? Yeah, okay, okay, cause it was a long drop, and it, it was, it was, it was really shallow. But please, don't, don't interrupt me. Please, I let you talk. No, no, it's my turn. It's my time to go. So thank you. Please, thank you, thank you. See, I lost my train of thought. See, so that's why we don't interrupt people. Thank you. And so, um, yeah, I blacked out. And when I, uh, I came back too, I was in the arms of an angel. And, and, and at the back, stare, he was staring like right back at me. And he had this brown, silky hair. And his brown eyes you could just get lost in. And oh my god, he had this body chiseled by the gods. The literal gods themselves. No, what? My, my head's fine. As I, as, I see you judging me though. Thanks, thanks for that. Yeah, you go get the doctor. Go get the doctor, please. Thank you. Yes. Well, maybe, maybe you, maybe it was, it was just a tourist. Thank you. Gotta put this on. I don't got a job to go to no more. I thought pediatrician nurse was gonna be the thing for me, honestly. As a kid, it always looked so fun. It was actually pretty god awful. Pretty terrible first day now that I think about it. I had to deal with some pregnant lady yelling at me. Some Mexican parents yelling at me. A kid sneezing in my face. Just not fun. And my coworkers also suck. But the worst of it all was the last kid I had to deal with, which wasn't even the patient I was supposed to be helping or doing a checkup on. I was doing a simple checkup on this little girl. And I'm just right there. Just freaking think, think, hitting the knee. Okay, yeah, that's good. Good reaction. All right. Ear, ear. And she had a little brother with her. It was her, her little brother, and her mother. All three of them. The daughter, doing good. The mother, just sitting there. The little boy, the brother, I guess, Juan or something. He starts running around the room. And I'm just like, okay, I mean, he's not bothering me all that much, so I just, just keep doing my thing. Okay, good. Good. And he gets up on that spinny chair. You know that spinny chair that the doctors have in there that they never sit on since they're so small? They have to go all the way down in order to sit down on it. Yeah, we never use those. So he just jumps on it and he's standing up, looking over the entire room, partially. And his mother looks at him and goes, Juan, get down, get down, siéntate. I don't know what that meant. I was just like, oh, she knows Spanish, okay. Uh, 
And I was, I turned to him, I'm like, Juan, is it? You're, you're fine. You could go ahead and stay up there. I just, please don't do anything. So I'm still doing my daily checkup, all right? Just a normal checkup. And the mother gives him that stare that every mother gives whenever they're in public with their kid and their kid is acting up, that death stare. Yeah, she gave him that and said, get down. And so he looks at her and goes, okay. He was going to jump onto the floor. And as he jumped, because it was a spinny chair, it starts to turn. And so as he's jumping, he starts to turn as well. Because his feet isn't fully off the chair yet. So by the time his feet are off, that counter right there where the freaking diagram of the ear is and the little bench is at, yeah, he jumps. Oh, slow motion. Smacks his chin on the corner of that desk. Blood goes everywhere. I already dealt with a pregnant lady that day. The mother started screaming as if she was giving birth. And it looked like she was giving birth too with the amount of blood in the room. Now, I personally have a phobia of blood. I don't know what it's called, but I have it because I would always throw up whenever I see blood. So I look at that. I see that. I turn around. I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't know what to do. The mother is right there yelling, Juan, Juan, and starts saying things in Spanish. And I could have sworn I heard La Caliente. I don't know why she would say La Caliente from the radio, but she did. I don't know. I'm a whitewashed Mexican. I can't tell you why, but I don't know. I was there puking the little kid, bleeding from his chin, the mother holding him, screaming. My coworker walks in. Her name is Lucy. She's a basic blonde, and she looks and goes, Oh my god, is it? <laughs> and she starts puking because she sees me puking and the little kid on the floor bleeding from his chin. So my boss also runs in. She's like, oh no, oh no. She gets us to, pushes us out the room. She gets the stapler gun that we have in there. It's, it was pretty in there. And she just starts going. Stapling that little boy's chin closed while me and my coworker were outside puking in the hallway where everyone saw us. I believe the kid was fine afterwards. I mean, thank God he was there. He might have bled out if I was at home. But after that, I just I just said, no, I'm done. I'm done. I, I quit. It just wasn't for me, man. My name is Juan Galvan. That was my monologue. Thank you. So I've been doing ballet for about nine years now. I'm 14 years old and I've always been on, wanted to get on point ever since I thought, knew what ballet was. So here I am on my way to Scottsdale to get my professional point shoe fitting. It's so fancy. I know. I'm so excited. So I get there. I get my grease goes. It's a great experience. I'm so excited. I have my first pair of point shoes. Can you believe that? I get in the car. It's a little bit awkward, to be honest. My mom and dad are not very getting along. They kind of separated. Dad had an affair with the baby. It wasn't the best experience. But, you know, life happens, and he got kicked out. So it was an awkward car ride. Um, I get a little car sick too. My stomach's a little bit sensitive. Ever since I've been young, I've been really sensitive. So a mixture of all this is just not great. We get in the car and we go to Dutch Bros. Dutch Bros is in Tucson yet, so we get it in Phoenix. I get what's called the molten lava. It's like a mocha, chocolate, all this fun stuff. And I got the biggest size you could get, probably about this big. I didn't know I was lactose intolerant. Got it with whole milk, so. I drank the whole thing, I was feeling fine, but then a couple 15 minutes in, I started to feel a rumble and I just thought I was hungry because I haven't ate yet. We get in the car, 
we're driving, we're singing, still a little awkward. I drink my drink, we're feeling good, I have my point shoes, throw them in the back, and then I start to feel my stomach really start to hurt. And I was like, you know what, it's probably nothing, I'm just hungry, I'm fine, it's whatever, I kept on driving, but then it starts to reach up, and it comes up and up and up, and it stops, and it hurt. So I didn't think about it, once again, drink some water, who cares? And then I threw up. I projectile threw up everywhere on my dad's head, all over the car, a little bit on my sister. I tried to roll the window down. Didn't work very fast. It just came right out. So I threw up all over the car. And that smell, ooh, you don't want to smell that. It was a mixture of, I'll say, dead animals, feces. It was in a very good mixture. Because then again, didn't know I was lactose intolerant. We get out of the car. And we just so happened to stop at that ostrich farm. You're not from Arizona, it's a little ostrich farm. You're coming down back from Tucson. Everybody's about to throw up. It smells. I'm crying. I feel terrible. I threw up everywhere. My dad has to clean the car. It's already awkward as it is, and I just messed up the whole trip. But I didn't get throw up on my point shoes. So I was okay. My dad gets off of the car. He goes over the fence of the ostrich farm. And he's a little bit of a bigger man, so I'm surprised he made it over that fence. He got a bucket of water and a sponge and he cleaned the car for a good 15 minutes. It still smelled after we got in. So when we got back in the car, we rolled down the windows and we went back home. But I got my first pair of point shoes. Thank you.